108 Sports. Of the four pitchers vying for the American League, Cy Young, former Missouri Tiger Max Scherzer has the lowest earned run average since July at 2.54. Nobody else is even under three. Scherzer was also looking for win number 20 last night in the Windy City. First inning, Scherzer gives up a two-run, two-out single to White Sox slugger Paul Konerko. That run drives in two runs, and Chicago is going to draw first blood in this one. Scherzer was settled down in the next couple innings. In the second, he gets Diane Vicendio to start the frame with a nasty changeup. Then, later in the third, Scherzer still dealing. Alejandro de Alza, as Brian Wilson would say, got him. Scherzer finished with six strikeouts on the night. However, in the fourth, the wheels would fall off for Scherzer. After getting the first two batters, Scherzer gives up three consecutive hits, including this one where he bounces it to first base. Two runs with score on the play. White Sox up 5-0, and Chicago defeats Scherzer and Detroit 5-1. Scherzer drops two consecutive decisions for the first time this year. Believe it or not, the Royals are still in contention for the postseason. Yeah, that just sounds weird. Entering last night's game, KC had won 11 of its last 15 games. The recent streak has kept them right in the thick of the American League wildcard race. However, they still need it to pass a few teams to reach the postseason. Going into yesterday's games, Tampa Bay had a two-run lead, or two-game lead, rather, over Cleveland and Baltimore. Yankees trailed by two and a half games, and the Royals were three and a half back. The Royals, did not the Royals had a chance last night to pick up a game in the Indians. Huge series for Irvin Santana and the Royals just behind Cleveland in the wild card race. Now, bottom true as Drupal Cabrera takes Santana's offering and smokes it to right field. 1-0 Indians. Abaldo Jimenez was dealing in this one. Gets Hosmer swinging, Billy Butler, and same pitch and same result. Seven innings, 10 Ks, and one earned run for Jimenez. Now, on to the top of the eighth, Alex Gordon with man on, and he crushes Cody Allen's offering for his 18th homer, or homer of the season to cut the lead to one. Top nine, George Kataris. Nah, I'm just looking. He takes a walk to load the bases up, and guess who's up? Alex Gordon. Could he do it again? Remember, he had a home run in the eighth. And bases loaded. Short answer on this one, no. Perez gets him to pop up to center. It needs to take him one of the series, four to three. After a three-game sweep, three sweep of Pittsburgh this weekend, the Cardinals earned a much-needed day off. Here's a look at the standings look heading into last night's games. The Cardinals led the NL Central by a game and a half over both Cincinnati and Pittsburgh with less than a month remaining in the season. Pirates at the Rangers. Gotta love the fans coming all the way from Japan to see you, Darvish, and he would not disappoint. He gets Jose Tabata to start the game. Darvish went seven innings and struck out six. However, Darvish's counterpoint, or counterpart, he was pretty good also. Gets Ian, or, uh, Ian Kinsler swinging. Cole went seven and struck, sh shut out innings and struck out nine. Top seven, and it's the Pirates that break the stalemate. All-star Pedro Alvarez doubles into left center gap. Marlon Bird trots around to score, and the Pirates take the lead 1-0 on Alvarez. On Alvarez's ribby. Pirates only need the one run, and this, three, and this one is three pitchers combined for a shutout. Pirates win their 82nd win, clinching their first winning season since 1992. People, that was the year I was born. That is a long, long time ago. Reds also in action yesterday. They would face the last place Cubbies, top two, Bronson Arroyo. Hangs one that Ryan Sweeney crushes into the seats and right. 1-0 Chicago, Sweeney's sixth home run of the season. Brunson Arroyo still, i not really a fan of that hair. I don't know what's going on there. Top three, Luis Valbuena says, yeah, I'll have what he's having. His 11th of the year, and the Cubs lead 2-0. And that's all they would need in this one. Former Red Travis Wood pitched seven shutout innings against his old squad, and the Cubs do a Cardinals a favor. Steal one from Cincinnati, two to nothing. When it comes to playing in the American Midwest Conference, you could say the Columbia College Cougars have it figured out. They have won the past 156 conference games. That is redonkulous. Yesterday, crosstown rival Stevens College was looking to end that streak. However, nothing comes easy on the Cougars' home court. First to start off, bump, set, spike it. That's the way we like it. Alyssa Beavers with the spike for the point puts Stevens up by one point. Stevens' Kerry Kircher gets it right past the Cougars. Coach, not too happy on that one. Stevens College in the first set, 25 to 23. Upset of the century brewing in Columbia. Second set, Columbia College's Vika Lavarenka gets it going for the Cougars, ties the game 18 to 18. Columbia College's Paula Hassa with the block on this one. Stevens College cannot answer. Cougars win the second set, 25 to 23. Columbia College went on to win the last two sets to keep the streak alive. 
Now, ladies, we've got a pretty big international soccer game going on tonight. USA versus Mexico, they win, and Panama loses or draws. They uh, get their spot in the World Cup for next uh, year. You guys watching that? Sounds pretty interesting. What time is it on? Uh, I think 7 p.m. Uh, we've got a couple, couple people out for USA, so uh, actually for both sides, Mexico and USA. So I think this USA team is pretty good. I think they're going to make some moves and uh, be a force to contend with next summer in the World Cup. All I'll right. That then. Good to know. Thank you very much. No Let's take a live look now. We're in Missouri. That's Columbia at 551 on.